Hey, hello everyone. My name is Sagar Pachapati and in this video, I will be talking about how to become an Azure Data Engineer in 2023. So if you are someone who is fresher in this role or wants to switch the career from some other domain to this domain, then please watch this video till the end because this video is very useful for you guys. Okay, so let's get started. So I will be taking two candidates. First one, who is very fresher in this role or second one is who has some experience in data engineering or how data analysis role and they now they want to come in this as your data engineering field okay so chalo first one is who is very who is very fresher okay or who just you know who doesn't know anything in this data engineering stuff and want to switch their career from some different domain to this domain so uh see in Azure Data Engineering or in Data Engineering, two things are the basic or very mandatory things. First one is Python, second one is SQL. So if you know Python and SQL, you can you can go and learn any any data engineering, whether it could be uh, Azure Data Engineer, AWS, GCP, and any other cloud, or maybe in on premise also. Okay, nowadays companies are using cloud, so we should focus only on the cloud technologies, not in the on-premise systems. Correct. So, first you have to focus on Python, then you have to focus on SQL. So, in Python and SQL, you do not need to know everything in Python and SQL. Okay, just focus on the basic plus intermediate level things and then go to this data engineering stuff. So, in Python, you need to know what are the latest tuples strings set and dictionary and what are the operations in this uh, you know in this data structures after that you should know when to use for loop when to use if else conditions and other conditional uh, op operators okay after that you have to know what is function how to call the function how to define the function pass i mean call call function with parameter without parameter return the value not return the value and others other things then focus on class object oops and these things this is very important topic nowadays and then focus on file handling if you have some time then focus on exception handling also and then focus on multi-threading in python how we can achieve the multi-threading in using python what does multi-threading means? You know, we run multiple programs at a time, at a time in one application or in one, one server. Okay, this is called, this is called multi-threading. Okay, once it is done, then you can, you should solve some uh, interview question. You know, suppose I, I, I give you one, one question that you need to manipulate the array and give this result then you have the ability to write the code in python okay and give me the proper result after that learn focus on sql so sql is a structure query language this is the language which interacts with the database so you do not need to worry about which database i will choose you, you can choose either my sql ms sql oracle and any other database you can choose it okay then you just focus on the sql basic command like dml commands dcl commands ddl commands tcl commands and so on once it is done you have to know what is constant in sql and why to use it and where to use it once it is done then focus on some uh, some uh, some famous clause that is where having group by and some aggregation function once it is done then focus on joins we have different kind of joins in sql like cross join inner join left join right join and so on you can just you know uh, take two tables and and play with the joins once it is done then there are there is uh, there is one more important topic in sql which is window functions rank row rank sorry rank row number dense rank then we have first and like we have many things many 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 functions we have it so you should know how to use that and what are different between all these three then you should also focus on lead and lag function which is very important nowadays and then focus on cts recursive cts why to use cts 
what are the difference between CTs and views, what are the difference between CTs and attempt tables and so on. Okay, when it is then done, then you should focus on views. What is views? Different kind of views we have it, materialized view, index view, simple view and other, other views maybe we have it based on the database and then focus on how to create a stored procedure and how to call the stored procedure. This is very important topic in SQL. Okay, once it is done, then you know, after after learning this SQL, you should, you should have the ability to write the SQL query and give the proper result. Suppose I give you one, uh, two, uh, suppose I give you three tables and I'm asking you to join those three tables and, and remove the duplicate out of it. Then you just write your SQL query like, you, you, Either you can uh, uh, use inner join and left join and any other join and then remove the duplicate and give me the proper result. Okay, once it is done, then you then you will have to jump into this Azure Data Engineer skills. The first skill is file storage that is called ADLS or blob storage. Okay, like there is a minor difference between blob storage and the ADLS so you just go and watch it all these things okay so what is file system i would say ki in this storage account or in this storage system we save our files for the processing purpose okay so let's say there there could be multiple kind of files packet files avro files orc files csv files json files excel files and then XML files and could be other type of files also we can save it. Okay, then if you have learned all these ADLS and blob storage and then focus on Azure Data Factory. So Azure Data Factory is a cloud tool, cloud ETL tool, you know, uh, it's just tool, you know, you do not need to do any coding out on it. So just suppose you have to copy the data from one place to another place, let's say from one server to other server. So you just drag the drag the activity, okay, and then uh, just drag and drop and choose choose your server name and other stuff, and then just click on the button. Everything will be taking place. You do not worry about the coding part here, and you can learn this technology in just ten to fifteen days. I would say if you proper uh, if 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 you give like uh, one to two hours daily, okay. Once it is done then focus on Azure Data Bricks. So now you have the uh, question, you know, what is this Azure Data Bricks? So Azure Data Bricks is a, a cloud platform which has the ability, which has the ability of Apache Spark, okay? So what is Apache Spark? Apache Spark is a distributed parallel, parallel processing system, okay? Where we process our data parallelly in a distributed fashion. Okay, we will talk about this in future. But and if you if you want to know, you can watch out my database playlist. You can uh, you can get the uh, you can get the playlist link in the description box. Okay, now in database also we have many many things, many many you know many topics we have it. So if you are someone who is very fresher, so focus on how to process the data, how to read the data, how to write the data. We have different kind of method to write the data. Okay, then uh, learn just basic manipulation like uh, rename the column, you know. Uh, we have aggregation function with the help of PySpark API and with the help of Spark SQL API. We process the data in Databricks. So what is PySpark? It is a, it, it, it is a Python, Python API and Spark SQL is a SQL API. So if you know SQL, then, then you can easily learn this database or, or Spark, okay? And if you if you are well well known in Python, then you can also learn PySpark very easily. Okay, now there, are some, there is more advanced topic in database. Let's say Delta Live Table, Delta Tables, Auto Loaders and other stuff. You can also learn all this stuff day by day, you know, first focus on basic and then move on to this medium or intermediate level topics. Now in Apache Spark or, or we can say in, or we can say in big data, we have two kind of processing. First one is batch processing. Second one is real time streaming processing. So in batch processing, 
what happens you know we process the data in a batches let's say uh, let's say yesterday data we process today and we give insight to our stakeholder or the end users but in real time processing what we do we process the real real time data let's say uh, right now it is 11 11 am in the morning and data data gets inserted into the application at 10:59 so we process the data right away and give the insight to our stakeholder so that they will take some decision on the business okay and for this see batch processing is very simple nowadays like they, you do not need to focus more on it i mean it's very simple simple stuff focus on apache apache spark streaming okay in this we have apache kafka uh, apache kafka okay what is apache kafka apache kafka we can say is a messaging queue system okay where we you know where the producer uh, publish the data and then based on that apache kafka uh, things we consume the data so first focus on what is apache kafka what are the you know basic component of uh, apache kafka like broker topics uh, servers uh, partitions consumer producer and so on once it is done then try to consume the data from apache kafka using spark streaming okay so once it is done then focus on what is data warehouse concepts okay data warehouse concepts then you can learn data mart what is data mart and then you can also learn uh, azure synapse okay what is azure synapse it is a data warehouse which has the ability of mpp architecture and polybase and other stuff also you can like there there is a very big big area in this azure uh, synapse okay so focus on this or, or else what you can do you can skip this part but you should know at least what is data warehouse what is data mart okay okay cool after that if you have some time or if you are very you know i mean if you want to learn how to build a dashboard you know how to build a report then focus on power bi so if you know this power bi and if you learn this power bi then you become a full stack azure data engineer okay so power bi is also a visualization tool but you know in this also we have very advanced uh, advanced features but you, you just want to get started then you can learn the basic stuff and it's a tool you know you need to know dex queries you need to know mds queries and it's very easy simple that's not a very big deal you do, you, you 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 should know what is data modeling first and then you can uh, switch to power bi okay cool so after learning power bi or if you if you do not want to learn this power bi you can skip this power bi uh, skill then move to azure devops azure devops is the is the technology with the help of which we uh, we uh, push the code into the different environments okay so in this also you should know what is build what is release what is artifact what is branch what is repository and other stuff okay let's say i have i have my data breaks okay i have my i have written uh, some code in my database which is in dev environment now i need to publish it into the broad environment so that other broader audience will see okay so what i will do here i will what i will do i will i, I will push my code into the in, into my repository and once it is merged into the master branch or some 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 branch you know maybe main branch master branch or let's say any other branch on then what i will do i will just deploy the code which is present in the master branch into my production servers it is an automatic way you do not need to do any coding stuff over there they are simply templates are present for most of the technologies of most of the skills in azure DevOps marketplace you can just you know uh, download them and then use of it so it's very easy thing that's not a very big deal but you should at least know what are these you know basic basic terms like build release artifacts 
publish and other stuff okay so and one more thing if you are someone who wants me to uh, provide you a, a live paid classes then please comment me and uh, message me over the linkedin over the email and then i will make a plan to you know to have a live paid classes and uh, don't worry the, the the money or the fees will be very minimal i will not charge very much as per the market you know nowadays people are asking more money like 25k 30k 35k i will not gonna ask this much amount i'll ask just minimal amount because we also have to pay pay some amount for the cluster for the azure portal and other stuff okay so i hope you have understood this video and uh, best of luck for the 2023 i hope this the next year will be very helpful or will be you know great for you guys एंड चलो फिर यहीं पे यहीं पे ख़त्म करते हैं इस वीडियो को और मिलते हैं अपने नेक्स्ट ईयर में थैंक यू बाय बाय